Well, hey there, ladies. It's episode 85 of the Health, Life, and More for Women podcast. And like most things in my life, my podcast is going through a little bit of change. No, nothing major. However, I have a new intro being created. So for now, you just get me. I think we're about due for another introduction. So if you've been around since the beginning, I mean, thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) If you're new, I am Jennifer D'Amato. I'm a certified health coach. I also chose to do a dual certification in life coaching. And then my whole world took a turn. I stepped into the intuitive eating space and it had been exactly what my entire life had been leading me to. I am now an intuitive eating counselor and I love coaching and counseling women into food freedom, into leaving diet culture, giving it the big old one finger, not a thumbs up, and finally defining their own health. Yeah. That's what I do when I'm not recording a podcast or raising my four daughters or on the chance my husband gets home at a decent time from his new job, hanging out with him because he's kind of really cool and my best friend. (laughs) If you listened in last week, I did my first ever rewind episode. I know a lot of people like to use the word repost, but I'm like, no, no, I'm picturing my old cassette tapes and rewinding. (laughs) So I rewound episode number two, making friends as an adult woman, which is so freaking hard. (laughs) I can't believe how many responses I got again from re-releasing that episode. I took a break. I took a break last week because it was not a good week. And as much as I like to be ahead on the podcast. Sometimes there's things that just come up, you know, like working and kids and (laughs) all those things that I can't quite get ahead of it. And then my health took a kind of a hit. So I gave myself some grace and compassion and shared again with you one of my all-time favorite and most downloaded episodes of the podcast. You know what it got me thinking though? Beyond how amazing that episode is, beyond how fun it was to really record what essentially was the first episode, because my intro episode was really short, how much things have changed, how much I've changed, how much this podcast has evolved and changed. Now, I don't know how you feel, like in a general sense, about change, like if you really enjoy certain things changing, like maybe the seasons, you really prefer warmer weather over colder, or you prefer colder over warmer. I I know a lot of people like that. (laughs) Maybe you look forward to changing careers and jobs. You know, I know many people who do traveling nurses, traveling doctors, and they really like the change, the change of scenery, the change of people they're around, the change of climate. Like they just really enjoy that. Maybe there's things you really hate changing. Um, I'm a parent, mom of four, and I'm pretty sure what can sum up my life right now is the word change when it comes to parenting. Everything is changing. My oldest is driving. She has her own car. She's getting her own job, graduating homeschool, and starting full time college classes. Big change. I don't love it. I don't hate it, (laughs) but I know it's coming. I mean, when she was itty bitty, I couldn't wait to change seasons out of those dang diapers. I mean, if I'm being totally 100% honest, it really was not the end of diapers because we had kids so close together. We were in diapers up to our eyeballs for years. Once one got out, another one was still going to be in for quite some time. And then another one and another one. (laughs) But I did look forward to not changing those diapers. I did look forward to the after part of, of potty training. Bless all you moms living in that right now. So I think in a big picture way, 
We accept that change is inevitable. Change is going to happen. You know, we can fight it all we want, but inevitably change wins. It's it's part of growing up. It's part of living. Death, life, seasons, change is part of it. So I think, listening to this, you might be nodding along like, okay, Jen, I see where you're going. Sure, things are going to change. And I accept things have to change. It's going to happen. Okay. So here's where I think things get tricky for people. There's one thing, one thing they don't believe should change. (laughs) <laughs> Any guesses? Most people do not accept that their body is meant to change. So we accept it when that body is an infant growing to a toddler, growing to a teenager. Sure, that's totally acceptable. The body is meant to change. If, if it doesn't, something's wrong. But when that same body goes through a change from its 20s to its 30s to its 40s to its 50s and 60s, we start thinking something is dreadfully wrong. Why is my body changing? My body shouldn't change. Well, I'm very simply going to ask you, why the hell not? Whoever told you Your body was not meant to change. Someone, at some point, lied to you. And on behalf of the liar in your life, I'm going to say, I'm sorry. You've been lied to. Your body is meant to change. Do you want to know why my body doesn't look like it did at the age of 20? I had four kids. (laughs) Four of them. My hormones changed. My breasts aren't the same. These hips, ooh, these hips have done amazing things. My stomach held four babies, four of them. And you know what took all that on? My thighs, Mm mm-hmm, supported everything. Your body was meant to change. You know, I hear the argument, but Jen, I only had one kid. Jen, I don't have any kids. I'm here to tell you the truth. Your body was meant to change. Now think about it. If you didn't believe that, would diet culture and the $80 billion industry have a leg to stand on? You know they wouldn't. They need you to believe that your body was not meant to change. You work so hard to keep getting that body back to what it was. I know you don't see my air quotes, but they were there. That's what diet culture wants you to believe. Keep trying to get back to that high school weight. Do you remember that in your 20s? Are you in your 20s right now listening to this going, oh my gosh, that's the thought I have. When you're in your 30s, well, get back to what you weighed in your 20s before you hit 30. I can tell you as a woman in my 40s, I hear it from other women in their 40s. If you just got back to your pre-pregnancy, your pre-baby, your pre-kid weight, diet culture has lied to you. Maybe someone in your life believed that lie and told it to you as well. I have clients who have mothers who believe the lie and share this lie with their daughters. Ladies, I am here once and for all to tell you, your body is meant to change. Imagine for a moment if you believed that. Imagine if you accepted that truth. Now what does your life look like? What are you going to do with all that time and energy and thought that you've been putting towards going backwards in time? You could look forward, forward to things. And even before you look forward, you could be present. 
fully present. I'm listening to women on a daily basis who, instead of accepting this truth that their body is meant to change, will spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to try to reverse time. I mean, if you think about this, the beauty industry is right alongside diet culture. There's a cream for that. There's an injection. You don't need to look your age. Don't worry. We'll suck that right out of you. What it's doing is continuing to feed the belief that your body's not meant to change. When in fact, I promise all of you, 10 years from now, your body will have changed. Right where you are, it will not be the same. It will be 10 years older. It will have more wear and tear. It will have experienced new things. And you can choose to accept that truth that your body is meant to change, that it's not supposed to be the same at 50 as it is at 40, or you can keep going backwards, which really keeps you stuck. I'm not saying it's easy to accept this truth. In fact, I think our culture and society has made it extremely difficult to accept it. It's hard to accept the wrinkles, the smile lines. It's hard to accept more weight in our midsection or the skin on our entire body just getting a little looser. I know at times, at least for me, I feel like it's me against an $80 billion industry. Now, I know that's not entirely true because there are other practitioners, counselors, dietitians out there fighting the good fight against this bogus lie. There are other people out there doing the same work I do and helping women get to the point of respect for their body, acceptance of who they are and believing their body is meant to change. Maybe it's time that you take the first step. Click unfollow. If you're on social media and diet culture and beauty industry standards are infiltrating your feed, you can mute, you can unfollow, you can sign off all together. That might be enough. That might be enough for you. But if you are combating the thoughts, if you cannot accept that your body was meant to change, but there is a desire, partner with someone. There's amazing practitioners out there. I just happen to be one of them. Find someone who understands your story. Find someone who you trust enough to share these thoughts with and do the work. If it's me, I would love it. I would love to be the one to guide you through that process. If you've considered it, and this is just that final, like, okay, I'm ready, head into the show notes, book a call, let's talk. I do see you. I hear you. And we've probably walked a similar journey. I just happen to be maybe a few steps ahead and can show you what I've learned and how much more peaceful I live on this side of the story. (laughs) It's always more peaceful to live in the truth and call out the lies and show it a finger or two. (laughs) So ladies, here's to embracing change. Here's to embracing all sorts of change, including that our bodies are meant to change. All right, until next week, ladies. Hey ladies, if you've ever struggled with thoughts about your body, thoughts about, am I eating enough, the right foods? I don't even know what healthy is anymore. I want to invite you into a private consultation with me. Yes, I'm your podcast host, but I'm also a certified health coach, a certified life coach, and I specialize in intuitive eating. I would love to talk more about where you are in your health, what your desires and goals are for it, and Find out if working together is the best step for you. All you have to do is go into the show notes, click book a consultation, pick the time and date that works for you, answer a few questions to apply, and the rest is up to me. I'll give you that call. We'll talk 
It's all about you and meeting you exactly where you are. I look forward to talking.